happy that uh, this game today and he's brought to all of you, not only over the CBS Radio Network, but it's going all around the world by our Armed Forces Radio to our fighting men and women overseas, up into Alaska, over to Hawaii, and of course at the outposts all around the world. And so to all of you who are so far away from home during this holiday season, and who I know to a man and to a woman are wishing you were here, for as much as it can be, we want to wish you a very, very happy and healthy New Year. The last of the ground crew uh, work is being accomplished now. They're going around on the field and picking up little tacked down pieces of clothes, sort of uh, slicing them off the surface of the grass, getting them off to one side or another of the field. The field markings are still visible. Uh, we question how long that situation will be in effect, and it will probably be a situation where your guess will be as good as mine on exactly where the ball is. Uh, when it gets down there in the center points of the field and uh, where it's been churned up a good bit. Looking at the comparative strengths of these two teams, uh, let's discuss that for a moment. I think, beginning on defenses, that the uh, Green Bay Packers have to be conceded a stronger defensive team uh, than the Cleveland Browns. Their record certainly speaks of it. And uh, we are going to give... Jim Brown, a very stern test. And Jim Brown has been tested sternly by the Western Division throughout this season. I think against Minnesota, he picked up something like uh, 39 yards. And against Los Angeles, he was held to about 20 yards. But uh, uh, would you agree that the, the edge goes to Green Bay on defense? Yes, Jack, I would. I think you have to give Green Bay the edge. And, uh, of course, they're going to have to stop Jimmy Brown. And looking at the season uh, of the Cleveland Browns, you can see that they were 11-3. and three. And the two games that you just mentioned, Jack, uh, you were correct. Against Minnesota, the Vikings held him to 39 yards. And against the Los Angeles Rams, he was held to 20 yards. So those two teams stopping Jimmy Brown were able to contain the Cleveland Browns. If you run down the Green Bay Packers defense, uh, Willie Davis and Ron Kostelnik, Henry Jordan, and Lionel Alders at front four. You can, they're not only big, but they're very mobile. And I think in Willie Davis, the Green Bay Packers have perhaps one of the finest defensive ends to come along in a long, long time. Their linebacking core uh, is excellent also, led by their fine middle linebacker, Ray Nitschke. And the two outside linebackers, Dave Robinson and Leroy Cappy, uh, have great range, good speed, and they're real good hitters. And then you move into the secondary of Herb Adderley, Doug Hart, Tom Brown, and Willie Wood. And you find that uh, those four, combined with the linebackers, led the National Football League in interceptions with a total of 27. So I definitely think the edge has to be given to Green Bay defensively uh, because of the fine men and the fine record they've been able to compile this year. And defensively, Vince Lombardi likes to go with just the standard 4-3. Uh, no tricks. So you'll find Green Bay if they hold to their general play pattern, will blitz very, very little today because this has been their pattern for the past couple of years. They don't like to get fancy. Vince Lombardi is a strong believer in doing the things uh, all the time that you do well, and the Packers play that standard pro defense very well. On offense, uh, I'd say the edge goes uh, a bit to Cleveland, the, uh, mainly because of the presence of Jimmy Brown, who is without question uh, the greatest runner in the National Football League or in anybody's football league today. At quarterback, I'd uh, shape him up as about even. Uh, Frank Ryan for Cleveland and Bart Starr for the Green Bay Packers, uh, in my opinion, are both highly confident, more than adequate quarterbacks, and their backup men are about the same. Zeke Bartowski and Jim Nanowski for Cleveland. They are veterans. Uh, Frank Ryan and Jim Nanowski have each uh, played through this NFL contest eight years. And Bart Starr and Zeke Bartowski are both 10-year veterans. So that the man behind the starter is a veteran in his own right. And, of course, with the Cleveland, or with the Green Bay Packers, Zeke Bartowski has come in and won four games this year. Taking a look at the fullback position between the two teams, each team has a great fullback, Jim Brown and the Green Bay Packers' Jimmy Taylor. Uh, Jimmy Taylor is more of an inside runner. Jimmy Brown can go outside very effectively. 
And uh, for Jim Taylor, a good deal of how Taylor goes depends on how healthy Horning is. Horning is a superb blocker, and Taylor has a much better day with Horning in the backfield than when Horning is sidelined, as Paul has been with recurring injuries through the season. Jim Brown really doesn't appear to depend much on anybody, except that is a fallacious statement on its uh, face, because you've got to have men blocking for you to get you started at least. But Brown has a tremendous ability to run through tackles and uh, run over and around. Uh, a great deal of uh, Brown's running yardage this year, and he gained a total of uh, 1,544 yards, I believe it was, has been the fact that the Cleveland Browns have been able to get into the lead. One of the tricks of defeating Cleveland is to get the lead on them and uh, force Frank Ryan to go to the air and not utilize Jimmy Brown. I guarantee you there is no team in football more difficult to beat than the Cleveland Browns as they are leading in the fourth quarter. They just run Jimmy Brown at you play after play, pick up first downs, maintain ball control, and uh, it's almost impossible to get your hands on the football. At the halfback position, uh, Ernie Green has developed very much this year for Cleveland, has really come into his own as a fine ball carrier, but I still have to put him a little bit behind Paul Horning when Horning is healthy. In just a moment, the game will be underway with the opening kickoff. Professional coaches really know their football. They know when their fullback is taking too many steps before the handoff. They know when their linemen are hitting an inch too low making their blocks. They have to know or they'd soon be out of a job. Another professional who has to know is your mobile dealer. It's his job to know your car and to know how to keep it in top shape and running properly. Morning, sir. Shall I fill it up? Premium? Yes, please. After he fills your tank with mobile premium high-energy gasoline, the trained mobile dealer can check your cooling system for possible leaks, keep your battery at full operating power, test your tires for safety, and protect your car with high-grade mobile lubricant. Remember, for good advice and good products, you can depend on your mobile dealer. you on the CBS radio network and armed forces radio around the world we're moments away from the beginning of this championship football game for the National Football League Championship between the Cleveland Browns and the Green Bay Packers. Down on the field, the starting lineup should be introduced. Let's take a look at the starters here. Offense for the Green Bay Packers who won the toss and are scheduled to receive Boyd Dollar will be starting at left end. He's 6 feet 5, 225 pounds, a seven-year veteran and one of the great split ends in the league. The principal pass receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Rod Skaransky at 250 pounds will be starting at left tackle and he is an eight-year veteran. Will be Fuzzy Thurston. Fuzzy Thurston was one of those injured in the playoff game against Baltimore last week. But I was mentioning earlier how the adrenaline flows in these key games and they play in spite of injuries. And Fuzzy Thurston refused to be substituted. Then you substitute back to the sidelines, stayed in the game in that game against Baltimore. He's 245 pounds, an eight year veteran. Ken Bowman is a youngster, so to speak, in this offensive line, a two-year man from the University of Wisconsin playing at center. He's 6'3 and 230 pounds. The right guard is Jerry Kramer. Kramer and Thurston have long been famed as a, the, one of the very best pairs of offensive guards in the NFL. Jerry Kramer, the other one, at 245, likewise an eight-year veteran. Then we get to Forrest Gregg, who's been a handyman for the past this year. He is starting right tackle, 250 pounds, but he can also play guard and does back up Fuzzy Thurston when Thurston is behind the time and in sideline with injury. Mara Fleming has done more than that a good job of coming in as the tight end with Ron Kramer being traded to Detroit. He's 6'4", weighs 235 pounds. The quarterback will be Bart Starr. Bart Starr will start a quarterback. He's been a question mark all week with some damaged ribs, but he's able to throw, and he's going to open up at that position. The running back spot, nominally called the left halfback, is the man that holds the record for the most points scored in an NFL championship game. That's Paul Horner. And he scored 19 points for that record. He's an eight-year veteran, 215 pounds. Jimmy Taylor will be starting at fullback. Likewise, eight years in the NFL from Louisiana State and 215 pounds. The flanker back will be Charles Dale. 
He's 6'2", 200 pounds, has good speed and very good move. For the Cleveland Bears, when they take the football, Paul Warfield is scheduled to start at the split-in position. The speedster is back and available to the Cleveland Browns. Nick Shafrath has been introduced as the starting left tackle. He was running with a face of a limp. May not be around uh, for the entire game. 255 pounds, a seven-year veteran from Ohio State. At left guard will be Johnny Wooten. Likewise, a seven-year veteran from Colorado, 250 pounds. John Morrow is one of the fine offensive centers in the NFL. Been in the league nine years, weighs 248. Gene Hickerson will be starting at right guard. From Ohio State, a six-year veteran, another 248 pounder. At 265 pounds from Southern Cal, the right tackle, a seven-year veteran, will be Monty Clark. And Johnny Brewer, who has been a very fine tight end for the Cleveland Browns this year, and one of their principal pass receivers, will be starting at that position. Frank Ryan will be at quarterback. Bernie Green will be starting at the left half back position. This is his fourth year in NFL play, and this is the year that Ernie Green really came into his own as the talented football player that he is. Jim Brown needs very little further conversation from me. He'll be starting at fullback, and he is a great one, 228 pounds. Gary Collins will be the sixth or fourth of that. Maryland, four-year veteran, who holds a record uh, along with Otto Graham for the most touchdowns scored in the championship game three. But Otto Graham surprisingly got his by rushing. Gary Collins holds the record all alone for catching the most touchdown passes in the championship game, that same number of three. So there is the situation. The Cleveland Browns are coming out on the field with a veteran Lou Rosa, who himself is setting the National Football League record today by the number of appearances as a member of the championship team. This is his ninth time that he has been involved in an NFL championship game, and he will kick off to the Green Bay Packers. The deep men for the Green Bay Packers going back, number 26 is Herb Adderley, and number 25 is Tom Moore. And we're now just seconds away from the start of the NFL championship game. This is Jack Greaves along with Jim Morris, and here we go. Rosa puts a good throw in the football, and it is taken by Tom Moore right on the goal line. He's back to the 15, cuts to his right, gets to the 20, and is dropped along the 22-yard line. That was Sidney Williams, number 67, coming in to make the tackle, and it'll be the Green Bay Packers starting out, first and 10 in their own 23. Flanker out, and he's set wide to the right. Boy, Dollar split a little bit at left end. Bart Starr gives the ball to Paul Horning, and Horning hit into the line. He's caught as he punches through the 25. Looks like he fell forward to about the 26-yard line. Vince Costello and Bill Glass combining to make the tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Bill Glass making the stop on Paul Horning. Ball is up at the 26, Jim. Jack, I think that's the type of football we'll see by both teams here this afternoon, both Cleveland and Green Bay. The straight-ahead stuff uh, and the power stuff are the, kind of, uh, the types of football that works on a slippery field like we have here in Green Bay. Second down, a little better than six yards to go by Sowers. Back to pass, gets beautiful protection, and throws to Horning. Horning looks away as it drops incomplete. They hit him in the chest, but Horning was beginning to lift for a direction to go. He took his eyes off that ball just a shade too soon, dropped it, and it is now third down and about six yards to go with the ball on Green Bay's 26-yard line. Green Bay wearing green jerseys today, gold pants and helmets, quite new. Cleveland Browns are all in white with orange helmets, and their uh, jerseys are trimmed in orange and brown. Third down now, six yards to go. Carol Dale out wide to the left. Boy Dollar out wide to the right. Passing situation, of course, and that's what Bart Starr is going to do, and he throws for Jimmy Taylor and hits Taylor. And it's the first down as Taylor makes the catch up at the 35, and he drops on the 36 yard line. Jack, Green Bay had four quick, uh, quick receivers because both Paul Horning and uh, Jimmy Taylor did come out of the backfield as receivers. They had a minimum of blocking, but he still had uh, still had plenty of time to get the ball away. First and 10 on the 36-yard line. And the flank of both out. 
Jackson went up in a virtually a 6 1 defense. It's Jimmy Taylor taking a handoff and uh, no hole. Larry was stopped the line of shooting. And then he backed off about a half a step and had another shot at it and picked up about four yards, getting that ball up to the 39 yard line. Three yards, let's call it. Jim Houston, the left linebacker. Jim Kalicki, the right tackle, coming in to make the shot for Cleveland. Second ball on seven minutes to go. Bill Anderson has come in at the tight end position for the Green Bay Packers. Well, there goes out very wide to the left side. There's a flanker out there. Tight end to set to the left. The throw is to Horning again. That same play, and this time, Paul Horning held the ball as he took it up to the 14 seven yard line. Yards on that play, and it's enough for another first down. Jack, on a slippery field like this, it's generally considered that the offense has somewhat of an advantage because, particularly on a pass cut, as Horning just had, uh, he knows where he's going, the defender doesn't, and he took a step inside and he was wide open. Well, they're wide to the left. Jimmy Taylor has a whole uh, inside left pass, and it's to there, picks up. Uh, Yes, uh, move that ball down to the 47-yard line. Well, Vince Costello made the tackle, and now they have moved the ball into Cleveland-bound territory. So it's second down and about five yards to go. Gain of five on the play. Second and five. Second and five, and now the Green Bay Packers have moved the ball over on the Cleveland side of the 50-yard line. They're up against now a six-man line. Two linebackers peel off at the snap. They were right up on the line as soon as there's a bomb. As Bart Stout throws for a goal, and he makes the catch down at the 15. He got the 10, he got the 5, and he did that standing up. Well, there, the flanker back. Made that grab on the 15. Well, they're not ran three teams, but the defenders are going to the end zone standing up, and the Green Bay Packers are taking a 6 to nothing lead. Seven yard touchdown strike. Walter Beach was attempting to cover on that play. Couldn't keep up with Carl Dale. Carol Dale. Holding. Taylor attempting the extra point. Now with Sarda Hole, Don Chandler has come in to try for the extra point. The kick is good. So it's Green Bay seven, Cleveland nothing. Play is stopped on the field. Here's Jimmy Moore. And Jack, I was talking about that just a moment ago prior to that pass play. On a slippery field like this, the offensive receiver, or, uh, offensive receiver definitely does have the advantage, and we saw it here uh, when Paul Harding got a pass, and on that touchdown pass to Carroll Dale. Actually, it was kind of a fluttery pass, and Dale had to come back for it. However, he did make the catch and eluded two tacklers after that. He's a great football player, and it's Early in the football game yet, however, and anything can happen, and generally does here in the National Football League. Leroy Kelly and Robert are in the deep position to receive Chandler's kick. And now we're ready for the kickoff. Don Chandler will be kicking off Leroy Kelly and Walter for the deep men for the Cleveland Browns, the Jet Set, as they're called, two very talented speedsters. They can really move for that football. Campbell's kick is quite short, and it's taken by Charlie Scales on the 15-yard line. One of the men uh, forming the screen in front of the deep man, and Scales is able to bring that ball back to 30, and he dropped up around the 33 or 34. Junior Coffey made the tackle, number 21 for the Cleveland, uh, for the Green Bay Packers. And the ball is spotted. Let's see, I've got to count them out, 10, and there's the 20, there's the 30, the 34-yard line. The yard lines are just about obliterated here, and certainly the numbers that indicate which is which are covered with snow drifts from the cleaning off of the field. We sort of have to come from one end to the other every now and then to orient ourselves in this football game. So it's the first time Cleveland has had the football. Frank Ryan is quarterback. 
And Ryan's going to throw on first down. Looks downfield, throws one over to the sidelines for Jimmy Brown, and Brown makes the catch, a spectacular catch, down on the 35-yard line of the Green Bay Packers, and he is out of bounds at that point. Feeling off the cover over there was Ray Nitsky as the Cleveland Browns got a one-on-one -on -one situation with Brown and Nitsky. Jim? And Jack, that's the identical play uh, the Green Bay pulled a few moments ago when they had the ball. That time both uh, Jimmy Brown and Ernie Green were out of that backfield as receivers. Apparently both coaches feel that uh, they can afford on a day like this to send their backs out because perhaps with the slippery conditions the defensive line is not able to rush quite as fast. Well, they picked up 30 yards on that uh, pass play to Jim Brown. Ryan is back to throw once again, and this time he looks over there and hits Paul Warfield. Warfield <coughs> just planting in from his widespread left-end position, diagonally toward the center of the field, gathered to the ball at the 20 and was dropped on the 16-yard line by Willie Wood. Call at the 17-yard line. Dave Hart, or Doug Hart, rather, uh, trying to keep up with Warfield on the play, but Warfield got the step on him and was clear to receive the pass. The Green Bay Packers are leading in the ball game seven to nothing with uh, a little better than ten minutes to play in the first quarter. But certainly the Cleveland Browns are knocking at the door. They're on the 17 yard line now, first and ten. Ryan back to throw once again. Boy Dollar, or rather uh, Gary Collins, has it in the end zone, and the Cleveland Browns are right back in the ball game with a touchdown. Her Adderley was over there trying to keep up with Gary Collins. But Collins really left him behind as he was about five yards to the clear in the end zone and gathered in the floating pass from Frank Ryan. And suddenly this ball game was practically even Stephen once again. Lou Groza hasn't missed an extra point all year. has come in to try it. Bay. 
Ball goes back to throw. And takes one for the sidelines for Boyd Ballard. There's a little high, and he could only get one hand in the ball. Would be on him and out of bounds to be incomplete. Covering was Bernie Parrish. And that'll make it third down and 12 yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. Jack, you can see out there that that ball is definitely hard to handle because although Bart Starr has not completed either two or three passes, uh, he hasn't thrown a spiral yet. He's thrown a couple of knucklers and one end over end, and that one, the last one actually, was end over end. Carol Dale goes out wide to the left, going down a lot wide to the right. 12. Dow looks down T, can't find anybody, he is knocked to the ground, and the play is dead. He wasn't tackled, he was knocked down by Jim Kanicki, number 69, and Bill Glass was also storming in there for the Cleveland Browns. But since he hit the ground, as a result of contact with the defense, the ball is down back on the 8-yard line. And so the Green Bay Packers cannot recall the first down. They've run out of bounds. It's fourth down now and about 22 yards to go. And Don Sandler is back to kick. Kelly and Roberts uh, underneath it, and as the punt goes off, Kelly signals for a fair catch, takes that ball, and it is down on the 39-yard line. Now, we have an interesting situation here. They're only 39 yards away, and they could put the ball in play with a free kick following a fair catch, and if they booted it between the uprights, it would be a field goal. However, they are not going to do that. They're coming out into a regulation swimming play. Paul Rothfield is set as a flanker to the left. The pitch out is to Jimmy Brown, and Brown swings around the side, but with good pursuit, number 77 came out of the pack, Ron Kostelnik caught him from behind and rode him to the ground as he got that ball up to about the 36-yard line. Dave Robinson coming up to help out. Ron Kostelnik shot around from his tackle position, was trailing the play, and as Jimmy Brown and did a couple of half steps for a moment, waiting for the hole to open. He got to him from behind. So a second down. Ball is on the 37-yard line. And it's second down and about uh, seven yards to go. About eight yards to go. Ryan back to throw. Hits Paul Warfield. Warfield catches him on the 30. Can't quite get loose. He is downed as he gets Ryan to the 24 with Dunbar coming over there to make the tackle. Ray Nitsky was moving in trying to put the pressure on Ryan. But as we mentioned before, both quarterbacks are having time to throw today because the footing is not conducive for a quick, solid start. And the charging defensemen can't uh, they sort of spin their wheels a little bit before they can get going and get in there. So the ball now is down to the 25-yard line and it's first and 10. Field now wide to the left. <clears throat> Ball is given to Jim Brown. Brown looking for a place to go. Finds one off tackle to the right as he danced around behind the line of silly for a moment and finally took that ball down inside the 20 yard line where Dave Robinson caught him and drove him back, helped out by Willie Davis. Jim? Jack, the last two times that Jim Brown has carried the ball, you get an idea of why he's so effective. Uh, he can take the ball up the middle or around the end. Several years ago, they used to use him primarily just up the middle. But in the last uh, three years, particularly since Latin Collier has been there as the head coach, they've used him both ways and made him even more effective than he was in previous years. Second down and five yards to go. The ball just inside the 20-yard line. Ryan back to throw once again. Has to run out of the pocket now. And looks like he's going to run, but he slips and skids on the slippery footing as he tried to cut ground and then was uh, kept down there by Ray Nitschke coming up very fast and Dave Robinson simply dropping on him. But he avoided loss on the play as he took that ball down to the 17-yard line to pick up three. And it's two on the play. It's third down now and uh, oh, it's shade better than two yards to go. The score in the ball game is Green Bay 7, Cleveland 6. Cleveland scored a touchdown but on a Fumble on the pass and center missed the extra point. Ryan and Ernie Green are both back in the running back spot. Warfield wide to the left. 
Ryan looks for Warfield, close one into the end zone, and Warfield can't quite get to it. Paul Warfield was clear as he ran what they call a post pattern. That means the eventual cut is toward the goalpost. And he was right between them when the pass got there, but he couldn't quite get to it. Doug Hart, covering on the play, had been uh, dropped a couple of steps behind Warfield. The pass was a shade too far, Jim. And although Paul Warfield has been out all year with an injury, he certainly doesn't look to me as if he's lost any of his finesse, his speed, his timing, or his ability to cut. He's been open three times and caught two already in this football game. And now they're going to try for a field goal from 24 yards away. It's fourth down. Groza's kick is on the way. And Groza's kick is good. And the Cleveland Browns take the lead. So the score is Cleveland 9, Green Bay 7. Timeout is called on the field of play. The score, Cleveland 9, Green Bay 7. Ford Kraut of the My Jaguar. Not jolly likely. That's Rob Walker, one of England's foremost automotive sportsmen. I'm Ford's quiet man. My assignment? Demonstrate the extraordinary quiet of the 66 Ford to owners of some of the world's finest cars. First, we drove Rob Walker's great Mark 10 Jaguar, and a very quiet machine it was. Then it was the 66 LTD's turn. We drove around the vast estate, and I could tell that Rob was impressed by the quiet quality of the LTD. I believe your Ford really is quieter. Not by much, I said. Rob was stiff up her lip about the results in the best British tradition. And in the best American tradition, why not prove Ford's quiet to yourself? Quiet test the 66 Ford. It's your Ford dealer. ready for Luke Rosa to kick off. The deep men are Herb Adderley and Tom Moore for the Green Bay Packers. Park Star is in on three out of five forward passes. Jim, uh, uh, Frank Ryan is in on four out of five. The kickoff drop into the arms of Tom Moore at the five. He's back to cross the 15 and 20 and is finally dropped as he gets that ball up through the area of the 23-24 yard line. Coming in there to make the stop was uh, number uh, 38, Sam Jerk. Johnny Brewer, number 83. So the Green Bay Packers now trailing 9-7. to seven. Take the ball first and 10 on their own 23-yard line. 77 yards away from payoff territory. And it's a pitch out. Comes back to Taylor. Taylor gets his first block, but the secondary defenders are up very quickly. And also moving fast was Dick Mozaleski, the tackle, who slid over and moved in, and he made the stop at about the 22-yard line. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is with CBS, the radio network. CBS and Gloversville, Johnstown, WENT. 1340 on your radio dial. the 21-yard line, off the two, it's second down and 12. Inman and Flanker both out for the Green Bay Packers as Bart Sauer drops straight back, has time, throws downfield, throws too high, pass in the third stall, holding the target, couldn't get to the football, Vince Costello, on whom it was called, is uh, lodging a protest down there, but to no avail as the yellow flag is down. is not quite the call. They're calling them for holding against the uh, Cleveland Browns. They were holding up not pass interference, and that is a five-yard penalty from the previous spot, but it still gives them an automatic first down. And the ball is now at the 27-yard line. Ball at the 27, first and 10. Boy Dollar is in sight to the right side. Carol Dale is split wide to the left. The ball is given to Paul Horning. Horning coming around the bend. Uh, breaks loose at the line of scrimmage. Gets loose up to the 40 to the 50. And is finally caught from behind the Russell Dowd as he takes that ball all the way down to the Cleveland Browns 39-yard line. Jim Houston coming in to finally make the tackle. A 34-yard run. Jim? Any fears that the Green Bay Packers... Uh, fans had that Paul Horning uh, 
was not 100% prior to this football game. I'm sure now I've been dispelled because he shook off a couple of tackles then at the line of scrimmage and almost broke it. First and 10 on the Cleveland 39. Star back to draw. Quick uh, sideline pass. Picks out there to Carol Dale who takes his spin back to the inside and runs from the 35 where he caught the ball down to around the 33-yard line. Wall of Beach was overcoming on the play. Vince Costello came up quickly to make the tackle when he spun away from Walter Beach. Ball is at the 28-yard line. First down. <laughs> Cleveland leads 9 to 7 over the Green Bay Packers. Three minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the game. End and flank are both out. Darrell Dale is wide to the right this time with Dowler split out to the left. The ball is given to Jimmy Taylor. He has a whole off tackle. Gets through it and on down to around the 20 yard line where Dick Mojolowski come up to make the stop for the Cleveland Browns. So the ball is at the 21 to pick up a seven yards on the play. It'll be second down and about three. Jim? Jack, you mentioned prior to the football game that Jimmy Taylor always seems to play better when Paul Horning is in the backfield. We got a good idea why on that last play because Horning threw the block actually on the defensive end is sprung Taylor. Down at about the 21-yard line. Five star calling signals gives the ball over to Jimmy Taylor, and Taylor, bouncing over the left side, is able to go to the first down as he takes it down now to around the 16-yard line. Bill Glass, number 80, coming in to make the tackle for Cleveland. First and ten of the ball, let's call it the 17-yard line. Nice blocking by Bob Skaransky in the tackle position, and by Paul Horning. the 17-yard line. First and 10 for Green Bay. Carroll Dale coming out wide to the right. Boy Downer slip to the left. Running back in position to run. And the handoff is to Hornan. Hornan gets a nice block from Jimmy Taylor. Slices inside of him. Takes it down to around the around the 10-yard line. Let's see where they dig out the football. Looks like it's going to be put around the 13. Yes. Ball placed on the 13-yard line to pick up a four. Tackle made by Jim Houston, the left side linebacker, and Vince Costello, the middle linebacker. Joe Barstar now is calling on his talented pair of running backs, Horning and Taylor, and they are moving the ball on the ground. Second down now, and uh, Shade better than six yards to go. The ball on the 13 yard line. Carol Dale comes out wide to the right once again. Six man front looking at the tackle. Taylor bangs right into the middle of it, carries the with it. And takes it down inside the 10. That ball will be spotted on about the 8-yard line. Nick Mojolowski, number 74. 260 pounds. And Paul Wigan, the left end, 245 pounds, were both moved backwards by Jimmy Taylor's tremendous drive. And Jack, week after week, it has continued to amaze me the precision with, uh, with which these professional football teams operate. I was down on the field before the game. It's extremely slippery out there. That ball is hard to handle, but yet we have not seen a fumble in the football game. Third down and about uh, three yards to go now. The ball on the nine-yard line. Horning takes the handoff. Gets blocking, looking for room around the corner. Cuts inside the uh, corner there to Walter Beach as he came up and was blocked out. And he's on close to the first down. He's in the area of the six or seven-yard line. Fuzzy Thurston out there doing a fine job of leading the play on blocking. And that is the end of the first period. The score is 7-9, Green Bay 7. We are now starting the second quarter of play. And the score is still 9-7. Cleveland leading the Green Bay Packers, but certainly Green Bay is knocking in the door. And they're down there now six yards away from the Cleveland goal line. First down and goal to go. Cleveland by star quarterback. They have made no offensive substitutions with the exception of uh, Bill Anderson and Mark Fleming at the tight end position. Taylor and Horton are the running back. Carol Dale is going to be flanker back. And Boyd Dollar to split end. First and goal to go. 
Now the precipitation, sort of a mixed rain and snow, is falling again. But as they move now to the opposite end of the field with the start of the second quarter, it looks like, just from looking at the field from up here, that the Packers have moved to an area of the field that has a little firmer footing, a little more muddiness visible at the other end of the field. So it's first and goal to go from six yards out. Star gives the ball to Jimmy Taylor, and Taylor is through the middle, across the five, dropped on about the three-yard line. Vince Costello, number 50, Larry Benz, number 23, the first of several Green Bay Packers to hit him. He's going to make a second down and goal to go from three yards away. taking some of their backs out and putting in linebackers and heavier linemen to beat up that defense against the expected power shot of the Green Bay Packers. And the ball is given to Horning this time. Horning is hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped there. Coming up to do it with Walter Johnson, number 71, 265 pound tackle. And Eric Barnes, number 40, coming in from the, his right halfback position. And so it's no game as the ball is still on the three-yard line. Third and goal to go. The score is 9-7. to seven. Cleveland with a two-point lead. So a field goal could change the lead situation again, but as far as the Packers are concerned, a touchdown will do it more convincingly. Third down. Goal to go from three yards away. We just started the second quarter of play. Carol Dale goes up very wide to the right. Boyd Dollar is flipping the left. Well, the beach is up to cover uh, Boyd Dollar. And back to throw is Bart Starr. He can't find anybody, and he's caught and thrown for a loss. Beautiful pass coverage by the Cleveland Browns as they drop back into the end zone and covered all the receivers. Covered them thoroughly. And Frank Ryan had no one to throw to. Nick Mojolowski, number 74, and Walter Jones, number 71, came in there, got to him, and brought him down for a loss that puts the ball back on the eight-yard line. So it's fourth down. And Don Chandler has been sent in to make the field goal attempt for the Green Bay Packers, which, if made, will give them a one-point lead. The score is 9-7 to seven at the moment. And the field goal will be attempted from 15 yards away. Mark Starr to hold, waiting for the snap. The ball is caught, plays down, the kick is on its way, and it is good. Well, timeout is called on the field of play with the score. Green Bay 10. For pro coaches, the ideal fullback is the man who can grind out four or five yards per carry every carry. And for drivers, the ideal gasoline is mobile. Mobile premium or regular. Why? Because mobile turns out long mileage on any kind of road, through any kind of traffic. And it's been proved public in the annual mobile economy run, where last year, 48 makes and models of American cars achieved an overall average of 20.3 miles per gallon across endless prairies, over rugged mountains, through city traffic, 3,200 miles coast to coast. Mobile delivered energy for long mileage, energy for fast pickup, plus dependable all-round performance. So fill her up with mobile, mobile premium or regular, the gasoline used in the mobile economy run. For only nine plays, as Green Bay controls the ball for 20 plays. Jim Brown is back by the line of finish. And coming in to make that stop was Leroy Cappy, the right side linebacker who held it across there. And had Jim Brown just about the time he took the handoff. And so it runs the Cleveland Browns out of bounds. They'll have to punch the ball at the line of scrimmage at the 28 yard line. So the score holds at 10 to 9 in favor of the Green Bay Packers. Pitch number 22 is back deep for Green Bay, along with number 24, Willie Wood. And the key kicker is Gary Collins, the leading punter in the NFL for the Cleveland Browns. He 
He rides a spiral well down the field. And going back to get it is Willie Wood. And he is tackled immediately as he gets the ball and drops on the 25-yard line. Sidney Williams is down there in a big hurry. A very fast man. A linebacker for Cleveland. And it puts the ball on the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Green Bay. Still a sort of a freezing drizzle falling here. More rain than snow now. The temperature is not at freezing, a little above. So it's uh, developing in a kind of a wet day. Now Green Bay has the ball. Darrell Dale is out wide to the right. Boyd Dollar is playing a tight left end. The single flanker out, and the ball is given to Paul Horning. Horning swings around to the right, can't get much around the bend. As he turns the corner at the line of scrimmage, he is caught and dropped and picked up about two yards on the play. Move from the 25 to the 27-yard line where Paul Wigan and Bill Glass combined to bring him down. So that's a two-yard pickup. Second down now and eight yards to go for the Green Bay Packers on their own 27. And you can hear the beautiful call, first made famous at the University of Southern California. And the response now is nationwide. Everybody hollers charge. That's uh, calling the signals as they're ready to go once again. Second and eight situation. The guy back to throw, and he overthrows Boy Dollar as he had one idea on how the pattern was developed, and Dollar had another. Dollar cut inside and uh, sort of hooked back toward the line. Star obviously was expecting him to face that move and then go on down the field and threw the ball about 15 yards over his head. And he had a little help that time not getting to his pattern by Walter Beach, who stopped him. Third and eight. Ball on the 27. Ball on the 27-yard line. Third down now and eight yards to go. Timeout is called on the field of play with the score of Green Bay 10, Cleveland 9. I like to turn on the stereo and just relax. It's like being surrounded by music. They're talking about Ford's new stereosonic tape player for 66. Over 70 minutes of uninterrupted music from up to four speakers. Hear it at your Ford dealer. Personally, I like to shift for myself. Maybe you do, but automatic is so much simpler. Then we're both satisfied. They're talking about the new Fairlane Sport Shift for 66. It gives you full automatic, or you can shift through the gears manually. It's yours in the Fairlane GTA. See it at your Ford dealer. <laughs> when you open it like a door, you walk right into the rear seat. And when it comes down the regular way, there's that extra load space. They're talking about the magic door gate on Ford wagons for 66. Swings down like a tailgate or opens like a door. Try it at your Ford dealer. I never saw so many new things in one show. He's talking about all the 66 Fords, Fairlane, Falcons, Thunderbirds, and Mustangs at your Ford dealer. See them now, and you'll start talking, too. Now we're ready to resume play. The Green Bay Packers are in the huddle. Greenland is waiting on defense for them to come up to the line of screen. They come up in a spread out formation. Aim and point are both out very wide. Bart Starr is back to throw. Third and eight, and he whips one up the middle and passes it complete to Boyd Dollar, who has the first down as he makes the catch at the 39 yard line. Bernie Fire is over there on the tackle for the Cleveland Browns, and the ball is at the 39, first and 10 for Green Bay. So it's a pickup of 12 yards on the play. The same situation existed on that play with both Jim Taylor and Bart Starr out of the backfield, not blocking, but as receivers downfield. And this is putting uh, added, or giving Cleveland added problems because they're not getting the good pass rush. First and 10 on the 39. And Bart Starr is back to throw. Throws quickly over to the sideline. And over on the sideline, hits Boyd Dollar, who is out of bounds immediately at the 46. Bernie Parrish wrestling him out of bounds. Six out of nine is the completion mark for Bart Starr now. Both quarterbacks enjoying a more or less trouble-free day in the backfield. If they can get a receiver open, they've got plenty of time to throw to them. Slippery footing down here as a result of the morning-long snow that has now turned into a drizzling rain. Defensive linemen cannot get their start to who needs in there. 
Ball on the 46-yard line. Second down and about four. Paul Horner with the ball trying to get around in and gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. It's coming up very fast with Jim Houston, number 82, and Bernie Parrish to make the tackle. And so the ball is still on the 46-yard line, and it is third down and about three yards to go. Star gets there in the huddle with the Green Bay Packers as they work out the next play. The defensive signal has been called, and Green or Cleveland has spread out along the line of scrimmage. They move up once again into virtually a six man front. Well, one of the other linebackers will uh, may feel off on this one. And off is to Paul Horning. Horning trying to find a hole as it's blocked by Bill Glass, who was blocked out of the play. And then recovered from the block, came back in time to catch Horning, and it runs the Packers out of bounds as ball was stopped at the line of scrimmage, still on the 46-yard line, and they'll have to kick it to Cleveland with the score at 10 to 9 in favor of the Green Bay Packers. Leroy Kelly and Walter Roberts are going back as the beat man with Don Chandler to kick. Eight minutes left to play in the second quarter of this game. Chandler back deep. Kelly and Roberts waiting. And Chandler rides into the football. A fair catch signal is given by Leroy Kelly at his own 15-yard line, so there's no tackle on the play and no advance to the football, and it'll be first and 10 on the 15 for the Cleveland Browns. Jim? Speaking about Leroy Kelly, he led the National Football League in punt returns during the 1965 season. He returned 17 for 265 yards for an average of 15.6. So the ball now goes to Cleveland on their own 15-yard line, still trailing by their single point, and we left uh, well, it's 7 minutes and 23 seconds left to play now in the second quarter. Frank Ryan is quarterback, Paul Rothfield wide at the left. Bernie Green will set as a wing back to the right, and Ryan lets one go for Warfield. It's the big bomb, and it is broken up over there by Bob Jeter. Bob Jeter stayed with Warfield, and as that pass came floating down, reached up and batted it across the sideline to make it incomplete. Jeter has been uh, brought in there replacing Doug Hart at the uh, right halfback spot for Green Bay, giving them a little more speed to handle Paul Warfield, who is a quick one. And the defensive move by Coach Vince Lombardi paid off in stage on that play. So it's second and ten from the 15-yard line as Cleveland breaks in the huddle. Gary Collins set out wide to the right, and Warfield is a flank to the left with a tight end set on the left side. And on a draw play, it's given to Jim Brown, and it didn't fool the Packers, as he was able to get back only to the line of scrimmage. Ron Kostelnik, the big left for Green Bay, was the first to hit him. And that's going to make a third down and 10 yards to go. Jimmy? Well, although Jimmy Brown, thus far in this football game, hasn't gained uh, very many yards, 15 to be exact. You just can't say too much about him as a football player, and particularly as a rusher. During his career, he's gained a grand total of 12,312 yards in the league and scored 126 touchdowns, and those are both National Football League records. Well, now it's a passing situation. You cannot expect the talents of Jimmy Brown to be displayed here. Third and ten on the 15-yard line, and Ryan is back to throw, and it is intercepted. Pass is kicked off by Willie Wood. And Wood is able to take that ball down to the nine-yard line before he is brought down by the man who threw the ball, Frank Ryan. at the 10-yard line. It is inside the 10, but it's not quite to the 9. But it will be first and goal to go as the first defensive break comes to the Green Bay Packers. This has been an error-free ball game. So that interception gives the ball to Green Bay on the 10-yard line. 9 and 2 feet yard line if you want to be real precise. Hard time now looking over that Cleveland defense as he calls the signals. 
And there will be a penalty marker down there, I believe, as Paul holding the effort down. Holding broke ahead of the snap. Taylor took that ball and took it down to the six-yard line, but it looks like it will cost Green Bay five yards. George Rennick, the official, is discussing it with Cleveland, but there will be no question about the acceptance of that penalty. And the yardage is marked off, putting the ball back down to the 15-yard line. It's still first down, but it's first and goal to go from 15 yards out. back in the huddle now. A little farther to travel and no chance to pick up a first down to score else on this series of downs. First and goal to go. Now from the 15-yard line. Carol Dale goes out wide to the right. Boy Dollar wide to the left. Mark Starr fades back to throw. Again, has a good protection and uh, shooting for Carol Dale over through and went on over the end zone and on out of bounds. Incomplete. So that'll make it second and goal from 15 yards away. But that penalty put the Green Bay Packers in a passing situation right from the, right from the gun. Bernie Parrish was down there covering on the play and was covering the target very tightly, which probably explains a good reason why the pass was overthrown. Certainly, Bart Starr didn't want to risk an interception this close to the Cleveland Browns end zone. Ball in the 15, second down. Boyd Dollar goes out wide to the right this time, and Carol Dale is set wide to the left. The throw is to Jimmy Taylor, who drops it. It's an incomplete forward pass, setting up a screen pass to the right, but Taylor failed to hold the ball, and that'll make it third down from the 15-yard line, and goal to goal. We've got five minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the second quarter of the game, and the score is Green Bay 10, Cleveland 9. They're changing footballs after every down. Keeping them dry. The right drizzle that has been falling seems to have stopped now. Sort of a mist in the air, but it isn't near as far as, uh, as it was uh, a little while ago. Dollar wide to the left. Well, they are very wide to the right, and back goes by Starter throw. This is the third downer, and it is incomplete. Going for Boy Dollar, coming over there. Walter Beach, number 49, who got in front of Dollar and knocked that part pass to the ground. We're getting a little reaction from the partisan crowd here in Green Bay. Many of them thought, uh, I'm sure, that there should have been an interference call on that last play. However, the officials, who are closest to the situation, didn't feel that way. So, we're going to have a field goal attempt, Jack. Don Chandler will try one, and the kick will be attempted from uh, 23 yards away. Kick is in the air. And it is good. Time out is called to the field of play, and the score is Green Bay 13, Cleveland 9. The Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, a vast wasteland where men come to break records. Early last November, Bob Summers and his brother Bill arrived with their specially built car, the Goldenrod. 32 feet of controlled fury, and with a supply of special mobile fuels. Their object? To break the world speed record for a wheel-driven car over a measured mile course. Here she comes. Bob Summers is at the wheel. He's in the measured mile. Average speed 409.2 miles per hour. All right. That really takes power. Power. That's why the Summers chose mobile racing fuels. And that's why you should use mobile in your car. Mobile gives you energy for fast pickup. Energy for you. Energy for long mileage. So fill up with mobile premium high energy gasoline. Mobile, the choice of the record breakers. The one thing we'll never forget was now we're ready for the Green Bay kickoff. Don Jamble doing the booting to Cleveland. Leroy Kelly and Walter Roberts are the deep man. And Walter Roberts takes it on the four-yard line. 10 to 15. Cuts out to the 20. Aims for the sidelines at the 30. Is caught along there. Finley Marker goes down after the tackle. 
Roberts was able to bring that ball back to around the uh, 33 or 4 yard line where he was stopped by Tommy Crutcher. Oh, waiting to see what the penalty is all about. It's against Cleveland as the ball is being brought back. George Rennick, the referee, sets off the distance and moves the ball back to the 16-yard line. Clipping penalty called against the Cleveland Browns. So first and 10 on the 16-yard line. Cleveland falls, trading the ball game now by four points, 13 to nine. And five minutes and 17 seconds left to play in the first half. Paul Warfield is our wide to the right. Gary Collins wide to the left. And Ryan now looks over that Green Bay defense. Gives the ball to Jimmy Brown. Brown gets his first block, gets his second block, comes around the corner past the 20, and is out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Guards pulling on that play. Wooten and Hickerson did a good job of clearing the pass. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. CBS and Gloversville, Johnstown, WENT, 1340 on your radio dial. Well, we're ready to resume play. They're spotting that ball that looks like right at the 25-yard line. A little bit short of it, but we'll call it the 25. Well, it is second down. It'll be a yard to go. And Ernie Green tries for that yard and may have fallen a little short. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, fell forward just across the 25, but looks like he's short of the first down. Willie Davis, number 87, the end, and Ron Castelli to tackle combined to bring him down. They're going to call for a measurement on this one. It looks from here like he would be a little short on the play, but we'll find out for sure in just a moment. Isn't too much of a yard strike in the center of this muddy the football field to get too accurate on whether or not a first down is recorded when it gets to be quite close. And the linesmen now are bringing the 10-yard chain across. And it's short of a first down by about six inches. So that'll make it third down and around six inches to go for a first down. Cleveland has called their play. They break the huddle, come up over the ball. They send one man out wide. That is Gary Collins. Otherwise, they're in a strictly running formation, very tight along the line. And it's Jimmy Brown giving the pass to picking up the first down. He does it. Gets down to the 30, uh, to the 35, and is run out of bounds around the 38 or 9 yard line by Willie West. A nice hole opened up on the right side of the line, and Jimmy Brown was through there and on his way. So it's the first down with play to spare. Jim. And Jack, as Cleveland set their formation that time, there was no question who was going to carry the football because Leroy Kelly, the halfback, moved up about uh, a foot and a half to two feet toward the line of scrimmage, indicating that he was definitely going to block on the play and that Jimmy Brown was going to be the ball carrier. First and 10 on the 39. Out of the water now with Warfield going wide to the left. First and 10, the ball is at the 39-yard line. They're on 39. Cleveland has the ball. Ryan is back to throw. He aims a pass. Warfield too hot for Paul to handle. And bounced off his shoulder, hit the ground incomplete. Willie Wood was over there covering on the play, along with Tom Brown. Neither could get to the ball as it bounced off the shoulder pad of Warfield, and it is second and ten from the 39. He really hummed that one, Jimmy. <laughs> yes, he did. A little whistler. Ball on the 39 yard line, second down and ten yards to go. Four minutes left to play in the second quarter of this game, and the score in the ball game is Green Bay 13, Cleveland 9. And a wing back out of Ernie Green, it's a pitch out to Jim Brown, the lone deep man, he gets around the corner and at a gallop, gets up across the 45 and is finally hauled down at around the 47-yard line. Willie Wood, the free safety, and Henry Jordan, all full tackle for Green Bay on defense, combined to bring him down. So the ball now is at the 47-yard line, and it'll be third down and two yards to go. They've got to get to the 49 for a first down. Third and two. <laughs> Gary Collins out wide to the right. Paul Warfield comes in tight to the left side. To the 
And it's Jimmy Brown caught behind the line, and they got him down just across the 35. Ron Sasonic, number 77, who's been doing a great job defensively for Green Bay, they brush it across there once again. And was the first to get to Jim Brown, and they dropped him on the 46 yard line. Where it'll be fourth down and about three yards to go, and Cleveland is going to have to kick the ball through the Green Bay Packers. The same thing happened on that play that I mentioned a moment ago, the right halfback. In that case, uh, Green moved up about two feet toward the line of scrimmage, and the left side linebacker uh, for the Green Bay Packers noticed it immediately, so they brought, he felt Brown was going to carry the ball, and he did on the same play that he made the first down a few moments ago. Elijah Pitts and Willie Wood are deep for Green Bay as Collins gets a high firing kick well down the field and kicks it out of bounds inside the five. What a beauty. Aiming for the sidelines to his right. He bounced the ball on the five and it turned out of bounds on the four. Leroy Kelly moved over and uh, decided to let the ball drop on the hope that it would bounce into the end zone, but it's kept right on going on its slight path and on out of bounds, and so Green Bay starts in the hole on the four-yard line, their own four. It's always difficult to operate uh, under these conditions uh, inside your own five-yard line, and with a day that we have here at Green Bay, as slippery as it is, uh, we might say it's doubly difficult to operate from that position. Ready now for the snap. And the ball is given to Jimmy Taylor. Taylor getting off tackle to the left. He's able to get a little bit out of that hole. He moves it up to around the eight-yard line. And he was stopped over there by Vince Costello. So it's a pick of a four to make a second down and six. Paul Horning doing a nice job of blocking for Jimmy Taylor on that one. timeout down there by the officials to give the two-minute warning to each fence. Two minutes left to play. In the first half of this game, Green Bay are leading the Cleveland down 13-9. The Packers have the ball on their own eight-yard line, second down and six yards to go. And the band strikes up, and the Packers cheerleaders bounce out on the near sidelines, and... Uh, dance a little bit in time to the music. Five stars come over to the sidelines to get into a strategy discussion. And now leaves Vince Lombardi to get back to the huddle. We're waiting for the full timeout before they get the ball in play once again. their defense nominally set and they are in a relaxed position spread out along the line of scrimmage waiting for Green Bay to come out of the huddle which they do now move up over the ball second down four yards to go second down about six yards to go I should say we went from the four to the eight on Jimmy Taylor's shot and the ball is given to Jimmy Taylor once again and there was no daylight that time he was running for something along the line but the Cleveland Browns had all the holes closed and he was stopped at around the uh, 11 or 12 yard line. And Cleveland now has called for a timeout. With a minute and 49 seconds left to play, they stopped the clock. It's now going to be a third and uh, about three situation. And if Cleveland can hold the Green Bay Packers here, they will have a chance of getting that football on the front and uh, putting it across or having a chance at least to put across the score before this half ends. One minute and 49 seconds left to play in the first half of the game. Packers 13, Cleveland 9. Green Bay has shown an indication to uh, do their running to the left when they have critical yardage to pick up and want to do it by running. And they're in that position right now. If they can maintain ball control with this important third down, situation here, third and three, they will be able to take that lead into the locker room with them at the end of the first half. They've got the ball now off to the 11-yard line. 
They've got to get up to the 14 yard line for a first down. So let's see who gets the nod from Bart Starr. He looks over that field of defense, gets down behind the center. Gives the face the ball to Jim Taylor, drops back to throw, throws to Paul Horning, and it is intercepted. Water deep, number 49. Steps in front of Paul Horning, made the catch just inbound, and Cleveland does get the break they were hoping for, but a little better one than they anticipated, as they have the ball now on the 30 yard line, first and 10 in Green Bay territory. Our star, knowing that Cleveland would uh, be betting on the running play, tried to cross them up. He made a good fake to Jim Taylor and did indeed draw the center of the Cleveland defense in on Taylor. But his throw to Paul Harding was a soft throw. And Walter Beach was able to get over in front of the Green Bay halfback and pick it off. So now, right on the 30-yard line, it's first and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. And they trail by four points. Ryan back to throw. Looks first for Warfield. Can't find him. Throws for Gary Collins. Collins. Can't Mike Sight make the catch of the ball. It drops incomplete. Covering him very closely over there with Tom Brown number 40 and Bob Jeter number 21 for the Green Bay Packers. They're on either side of Collins. But Collins has been known to catch that ball in heavier traffic than that. Couldn't quite hold on to this one, however. So it's second and 10 on the 30-yard line. Henry Jordan banging through there from the front four of the Green Bay Packers. Hinkson, the decision of Frank Ryan a little bit on who to throw to. Jimmy, talking about uh, Gary Collins, last year, of course, in the championship game, he caught three touchdown passes, which is a National Football League record in a championship game. Warfield is a flanker out to the left side. Collins wide to the right, Ryan back to throw once again. Big rush is on this time, and Ryan is running for his life and can't get away. The man that got him was Dave Robinson, number 89, and Ray Nitschke set it up with a big chance in his middle linebacker position. He forced Ryan to run from the pocket, and there was Mr. Robinson to bring him down, and that loss puts him back around the 35-yard line. A big key defensive play by the Green Bay Packers on that one is the blitz was on. And the first time a full-scale blitz has been called by either defense in this game. Tom Hutchinson has come in at the tight end position, replacing uh, Joey's coming in, it looks like, for Gary Collins. Yes. Hutchinson can play both. Flanker, tight end, or split end, is in there now. And he's slung along the right side of the line. Warfield is out as a single flanker. Ryan is back to throw. And he flips one to Jimmy Brown, who takes it on the 32, he's down to the 25, is hit hard there, falls forward to the 21-yard line. Bob Jeter came up, and Ray Nitschke is between them. They really lowered the boom on Jimmy Brown, but he has the ball down now on the 21-yard line. It's a yard short of the first down, they had to get to the 20 for the first down. So it'll be fourth and one, and Cleveland, with 52 seconds remaining in the first half of this game, has taken another timeout. Jim, that pass completion uh, to Jimmy Brown actually was a little checkoff uh, pattern to the left side, which Brown ran perfectly. He moved up into blocking position to take uh, the on-rushing defender, gave him a couple of good bumps, and then just flipped off to the left side, and Ryan hit him perfectly. Uh, there was no one within 10 yards of him, and he was able to carry the ball down to the 21-yard line with just 53 seconds now showing on the scoreboard clock, and I might remind you that that is not the official time. However, it's generally pretty close. And with the Packers having a 13-9 lead, Lou Groza comes into the football game, and we're going to see uh, the field goal. On fourth down, we're going to attempt to narrow the margin with a field goal attempt from 28 yards away. Lou Groza to kick it. And the kick is good. Lou Groza has kicked a 28 yard field goal, and now it is 13 to 12. Green Bay leads by one point with 48 seconds left to play in the first half of this game. Jack Dreams, along with Jimmy Moore, speaking to you from Green Bay, Wisconsin, in this NFL championship contest, and it is a very tight, hard fought affair between the Green Bay Packers, Kings of the West, and the Cleveland Browns, champions of the East. Cleveland will be kicking off to Green Bay. A 13-12 ball game in favor of the Packers. 48 seconds left to play. 
before we come to the end of the first half. A slight mist in the air, but generally speaking, the uh, rain mix with snow has stopped. Who goes an hour? He takes the football from the official as he comes out to midfield along the 40-yard line. Midway between the sidelines, strikes that is, and gives it to uh, Goza. Goza backs away now for the kickoff. The deep men are Herb Adderley and Tom Moore for Green Bay. Whistle blows. Goza moves forward. Gets that ball high in the air. It's spinning a little bit short. It's taken on the seven-yard line by Tom Moore, and Moore is able to get back across the 20, 25, up across the 30, and then it's finally nailed and dropped in around the 32-yard line. Sidney Williams is up there to make the tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Ball with the ball at the 32. It'll be first and 10 for the Green Bay Packers. First and 10 now. Clock is running. 30 seconds left to play in the first half of the game. Bart Starr gives the ball to Jimmy Taylor. And Taylor coming around the corner. He moves one tackler, but then his foot to get it out from under him as he tried to make the cut back to his right. And he was brought down with the 34-yard line. Galen Fisk coming up to kind of put on him after he skid him to the ground. You have to do that because if no one touches him, uh, he can get up and run again. If they hit the ground as a result of contact with the defender, the ball is dead at that point. And the clock has run out. Gun sounds ending the first half with the score, Green Bay 13, Cleveland 12. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. CBS in Gloversville and Johnstown, WENT, 1340 on your radio dial.
29 yard line. Second down and 12 for season. They break to the hundred now. And as they come out, Paul Warfield is coming out wide to the right side. He's a flanker out there with Gary Collins. He split and playing tight to this right side as well. Lady Reed trying to this time, trying to shoot around the right to the left, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Bob Jeter coming up very fast with that back position and the right side linebacker over there, Leroy Cathy combining on the stop. No gain on the play. The ball is still on the 29-yard line. with takes the third down and 12 yards to go for the Cleveland Browns. They just started the second half of play. Green Bay calling the defensive play. Fans out now. As Cleveland breaks in the huddle. Also the Cleveland will be the second half. That's that to throw. That's the one toward the sideline. Gary Collins makes the grab. Is caught and put out of bounds at a varsity 26 to 7 yard line by Herb Adderley. That's complete to Gary Collins. And it's enough for a first down by about five yards. It'll be first and 10 on the 46 yard line for Cleveland. A big third down play, and Frank Lyon brought it off. First and ten. Out of the huddle. Collins coming over to the right side and it's cut out. There's a wide end to the right. Warfield flanking to the left. Trying back to throw. A quick one out to Warfield and Warfield looks away before the ball got to him and it bounced out of his hands incomplete. He grabs a handful of mud and throws it disgustedly to the ground as he gets up. Bob Jeter was over there covering on the play. to make a second down and ten. Timeout is called on the field of play with the scores. Green Bay 13, Cleveland 12. Ford asked people what they wanted. I want a Get it at your Ford dealer's white sale. Full-size Ford sedans with Galaxy 500 pleated vinyl seats, white walls, four-wheel covers, big six engines, fully synchronized manual transmission, all at a specially reduced white sale price. That's nice, but does it come in any other color? Get it in blue, too. Either two or four-door models. Ford 6 is great, but I want V8. Get it. Special savings on optional 390 V8. Well, I want to have automatic transmission. Get it. Reduced prices on optional cruise and attic. I want air conditioning. Get it. Optional air conditioning at reduced prices, too. Save big at your Ford dealer's great price sale. All are back and ready to go. I just after a pass has fallen incomplete to Jim Brown making it now third and on their own 46-yard line for the Cleveland Browns. Ryan drops back. And he can't follow the receiver. He had time, but the receivers were covered, and Ryan Alaldry finally broke through the wall around Frank Ryan and threw him for a loss back at the 38-yard line. So Cleveland will now have to punch the ball to Green Bay. Elijah Pitts and Willie Wood are going back as twin safety for the Green Bay Packers. The ball back at the 38-yard line. Gary Collins to do the punting, fourth down. The snap is on its way. It's a little low, but Collins takes it, recovers, gets the kick on its way. Elijah Pitts takes it around the 20, gives John Furr back to the 10. And as he tries to turn around and get back up to him, he is hit and dropped at the nine-yard line. Stan Zurich was the first to hit him. Got him down at the nine. Let's see if he fell forward to the ten and be in that area that the Green Bay Packers will put the ball in play. Bottom kick was a low liner, and uh, Elijah Pitts was moving backwards as he had to go back to catch the ball. And then kept on going backwards, trying to get an angle to get the um, ground backwards coming down. And the nose of the ball is right at the 10-yard line. First and first. Mark Starr gives the ball to Paul Horner. Horner, off tackle. He's able to get that ball up to the 15-yard line, just across it. 
Tackle was made by uh, Ross Cooper, number 20, Larry Benz, number 23. Now the ball is up at the 16-yard line. That'll make a second down. It's just short of the 16. It'll be second down and a long four yards to go for a first down. Joe is coming down fairly well. Now, they're very pleased, no place, but there's a lot of them. Harding takes it again, and again, drop tackle. And this time, he is up too close to the 20-yard line. Second down and about eight. Joe Harding takes it again, and again, drop tackle. And this time, he is up too close to the 20-yard line. He's also close to the first down. Let's see where they dig it out. Putting that ball, it looks like that's being spotted at the 19. Right football is called off to the sideline. Joe's running set to down, and it's third down, and a short yard to go. The ball is 19, they've got to get just up to the 20. A little less than a yard away for the first time. Signals gives it to Jimmy Taylor. He's got the first down. Oh, he went into that line. And took the ball up to an early 21. And there's a little argument going on as uh, Taylor disengages himself from the grass from about half the sun. And it's first and ten. And the football is at the 21 yard line. More than 10 minutes left to play in the third quarter. The score holding at a half time margin of 13 to 12 in favor of the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have picked up a, an important first down. Now I have a first and 10 at the 21. Morning and Taylor, the running back, are both set back of the quarterback in running position. And it's a pitch out to Jimmy Taylor. And Taylor cutting inside his blocker, who right out the corner man is able to bring that ball up to around the 26 yard line where Bernie Ferris was able to make the tackle. So Horner Hill going out to uh, move in with Jim Kramer and Double C in the corner man over there. Jim? I think in the last three plays, the left defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns, Dick Mojarecki, has moved in the gap between the guard and the center rather than playing head up the guard, and that's exactly the way that the Packers have been running. Time out. So time out is called on the field of play with the score of Green Bay 13, Cleveland 12. Heads up, Hansel. With the Packers leading 13 to 12 during the timeout, Vince Lombardi took the opportunity of talking with Bart Starr on the sideline. They're in a second and four situation at the 26 yard line. They discussed the strategy and now we're ready to go. Starr with time throws. Hitting at the 38-yard line, making the catch is Boyd Dollar and making the tackle Bernie Parrish. Let's take a look at that in the end zone isolated camera. Boyd Dollar, a big one, working against Bernie Parrish, and here he is. Getting by the linebacker Houston. There he's on Bernie Parrish. He turns to the inside. Bernie Parrish makes the tackle, but another first down for the Packers. The ball is at the 38-yard line, first down and 10. And now Bob Long has come in. He's a speedster, and he is wide to the left with Dale out on the right. And Jim Taylor gets the ball, pounding out to about the 45-yard line. Vince Costello, along with Galen Fiss on the tackle. Costello, number 50, and Fiss, number 35. From the 38 out to the 45 yard line to make it second down and three for Green Bay. Can you mention Bob Long? You said the word speedster, and that could be an understatement for this boy. He can't fly, and it wouldn't surprise me soon to see Bart Starr sending him deep, trying for the big one. They put him on the other side now, over against Parrish. But again, they go to Taylor, and he comes firing to the Cleveland 46-yard line. Walter Beach making the tackle on the play. It's a first down for the Packers. First and 10, Green Bay, with eight minutes and three seconds to play in the third quarter. 
Jimmy Taylor was another one of those walking wounded coming into this ball game. He has been suffering on and off all season with a pulled groin muscle, and yet he's out there today figuring the same way as Bart Starr. There's only two and a half hours left of this season, and now they've boiled it down to about half of that. That's the 12th first down for the Green Bay Packers. Again, Long is out to the right, and Dollar is to the left. First and 10 at the Cleveland, 46. Starr throws to Taylor. Takes off the at the 40. He's down at about the 36-yard line. Hard running by Jim Taylor. Biff hit him, and then Beach. It's another first down, and the Packers are on the move. They started this drive back on their 10. Eight plays ago. First and 10 at the 35-yard line of the Browns, with the Packers on top, 13 to 12. Getting that number five we were looking at was actually a 15, the mud having obscured the one on Bart Starr's back. And there is Bart as he brings his team out. And this is... for Cleveland, and then along came Ben. Let's take a look at that on stop action. Bart Starr handing off to Paul Horning, Forrest Gregg, the right tackle, opening a big hole along with Jimmy Taylor, and here he steps out of one tackle and moves for big yardage. The Packers first and 10 on the Cleveland Browns 15-yard line. The Packers moving the ball on the ground. On to the left this time. Taylor straight on and picking up a couple. Number 69 on the top there was Jim Konecki. Number 50 is Vince Costello. The ball now is in at the 13-yard line. Second down and eight for Green Bay. We've seen a lot of great football players here today, and uh, 14 of 16 of the first round choice in the NFL were picked, and we'll go over a few of those names in just a moment. 14 of the first 16 have been signed. Second down, eight at the 13-yard line of the Browns. Ball Hoy. Paul Horning using his blockers effectively, and it's a 13-yard touchdown to make it 19 to 12. The Packers with 5:42 left to play in the third quarter. Let's take a look at that on stop action. You'll see Paul Horning take it on the sweep. Jerry Kramer's in front of him, and here he is. Jerry Kramer throwing a great block against Walter Beach. Paul timing it beautifully for the cutback and the six points. Don Chandler with Park Star holding will be trying for the point after touchdown. Good. With a score of the Packers 20 and the Browns 12, let's pause for a moment. The Packers are leading 20 to 12, and a fog is rolling in over Green Bay now as Don Chandler kicks off for Green Bay. Walter Roberts a yard back in. 15, 20, 25, and on to the 31-yard line. Making the tackle was Marv Fleming, number 81. As I mentioned, there is a fog around the perimeter of the stadium, and thus far it is not a factor in the football game. The lights are on, and the visibility on the field is good. At the 31, it is first and 10 for Cleveland. The Packers went 90 yards in 11 plays after the Browns had had the ball for the first six plays of this third quarter. Back of Ryan. To the 35. He's hit by Ray Nitschke, number 66, and Leroy Caffey, number 60. And the penalty marker is down. We'll cross Green Bay 15 more. Again, we mentioned.
mentioned, 14 of 16 first-round picks have been signed by the NFL, 11 of 13 of, this, of the second-round picks, 13 of 14 of third-round picks. The 14th first-round choice was signed by the New York Giants. He's Francis Clay, a defensive tackle from Missouri. 13th-round selection was Tony Jeter, and that's Jeter by Nebraska. And he was signed by the Green Bay Packers. The St. Louis Cardinals also announced the signing of their top future pick of 6, 1964, halfback Johnny Rowan of Missouri. In Packer territory at the 47, it's first and 10, and this is Jim Brown to the 40, and fighting his way in close to the 35. Willie Wood was in there with Henry Jordan, played with the Browns in the 1957 championship game to make the tackle. I'm sure you noted, while well, Frank was telling us about some of the great collegiate stars who are coming into the National Football League, that the penalty had been for grabbing the face mask, and the ball now is in at the 38-yard line. Second down, and a short two. Green Bay leading by eight, 20 to 12. Four and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Jim Brown bangs his way into the 35-yard line, and Willie Wood Tough little competitor is in there to make the tackle for the Packers. It's enough for the first down. Tommy Crutcher is reporting now into the Green Bay lineup. Tommy, second-year linebacker from TCU. in there in place of Ray Nitschke at the moment. Hey, what I think they'll probably do is move Leroy Caffey to the middle linebacking position, and Crutcher will probably go to the outside. Caffey having had a little experience in the middle. And it appears that Nitschke had damaged his left arm. We'll try and get a report on Ray Nitschke as soon as possible. The ball is resting at the 35-yard line. Green Bay territory, and it's first and ten for Cleveland. As they started this drive back in their 31. And this could be a very important drive from the Cleveland point of view because they uh, are trailing by eight, trying to get back into the game. I know uh, one fellow, uh, Frank, that the Browns are very happy about is the signing of Gary Lane, the young quarterback from Missouri, who is certainly an outstanding college player. Ray Nitschke just doesn't want to sit down today. He is back in there, and Tommy Crutcher comes to the sideline. <laughs> Kevin, they play for all the marbles. They'll all be in there if they can. Yes, indeed. Gary Collins is coming out to the right, and Paul Warfield is split left. Dick Shaprath has not played since early in the first quarter. A pulled leg muscle. The pass is to Collins at the 30, and Adderley makes the tackle at about the 28 as the ball came popping out of there goes out of bounds. The Browns will have it halfway between the 25 and the 30-yard line. They bring it to the inbounds marker. As you look at Frank Ryan. Ryan today has thrown the ball 13 times. Now 14. And he has hit Collins on three occasions for 40 yards. Second down, three. The ball at the 27. Ryan throwing the long one for Jimmy Brown. It is incomplete in the end zone. A fine defensive play by Ray Nitschke and Willie Wood. Double teaming on Jim Brown in the end zone. at Ray Nitschke, who just went out of the game and came right back in. He had damaged his left arm, but he's back in the ball game. And here on that last play, from his middle linebacking position, he'll roll all the way into the end zone to help Willie Wood on Jimmy Brown. There he is. Just a little distraction for Jimmy Brown, and the ball is dropped. Great shot by our CBS cameras on that one, and it's third and three at the 27-yard line. Trailing by eight, the Browns are trying to get on the board one way or the other at the moment. Ryan has trouble holding it. Lionel Aldridge, number 82, gets 
some help and takes him down at about the 30-yard line, and Luke Rosa will be coming in. Let's take a look at that on stop action. Actually, the ball is wiped off by the officials, but there's a little mud remaining where it's lying on the ground, and there you see Frank Ryan as the ball slips, and he tries to pick up the first. He misses it, and the Browns have now brought on Lou Groza. Fourth and five at the 30, and Lou Vito, who will be 42 years old 10 days from now, will be trying from about the 37-yard line. Franklin puts it down, throws it blocked and going into the end zone. The Green Bay Packers take over the ball at the 20-yard line, first and 10. And Ken, with that score, 20 to 12, that blocked field goal is going to become very important because had they got that field goal, they would have been within one touchdown of the lead, and now they are again trailing by eight. It is uh, the fog coming down now into Lambeau Stadium in Green Bay. Second down and about nine as Jim Taylor came up with short yardage. Darrell Dale wide to the right as Bart Starr throws and it is incomplete for Bill Anderson. Anderson, the tight end, who was one of the heroes last week, catching eight against the Colts. Last year, Bill was coaching at Tennessee, but he came back to the pro ranks this year. So now the key third down possession situation. According to the Packer bench, Henry Jordan was the man who blocked the field goal. Again, that, of course, brings up a crucial play for the Packers. They'd like to maintain that ball. There's 138 left in the third period. They have been working principally to their right. Bart Starr, again, will be careful with it, deep in his own territory. Starr getting time and firing upfield and hitting. Harold Dale making the catch. Bernie Parrish on the tackle. The ball out to the 33, and it's a first down. Take a look at that reception by Carol Dale from our end zone isolated camera. He'll be man for man on Bernie Parrish, and there you see Parrish has moved inside. He's not going so far outside anymore, but Carol Dale turns still to the inside. He moves into the outside, and an important first down for the Packers. The ball is spotted at the 34-yard line, first and 10 for Green Bay. They're leading 20 to 12, a minute to play in the third quarter. Fire Tony Sacco cleaning off the football. Jim Taylor straight ahead. Dick Mojuleski underneath there for Cleveland on the play. Mojuleski playing in his eighth championship game to move into a tie with Andy Robustelli. Second in that category in the National Football League. Again, as I watch these Green Bay backs run, Horning and Taylor, of course, Elijah Fitz, the good filler man on the bench. It's going to be quite an offensive team in 66 with the signing of Donnie Anderson, the Texas Tech, the 1964 future pick. He is one fine football player joining a bunch of fine football players. The clock shows about 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. Second and six at the 38-yard line of Green Bay. They lead by eight points, 20 to 12. Taylor again, slamming out to the 44-yard line. That's Walter Beach, number 49, on top there on the tackle. 
And underneath was Larry Benz, the safety man. And that is the end of the third quarter of the championship game. The score is Green Bay 20 and Cleveland 12. We pause now for station identification. This is Ken Coleman with Ray Scott and Frank Gifford at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Packers have just picked up their 17th first down of the afternoon. As we open the fourth quarter, they're at their 44-yard line, first and 10. They're leading the Cleveland Browns, the defending champions of the National Football League, 20 to 12. White snow at the moment here in Green Bay. I would just say that this is the type of offense that Vince Lombardi loves, the Packers head coach. Bob Skronsky, their left tackle for us. Greg, the right tackle. Of course, the two guards, Fuzzy Thurston and Jerry Kramer, doing a fine blocking job. And now you see Boyd Dollar wide to the right at the bottom of your screen and Dale up there on the left. And this is Horning to throw. And he is throwing for Carol Dale. Complete down at the 25 yard line of the Browns. Walter Beach was back there going with him. Always dangerous, the option play by Paul Horning. Second down and 10 at the 44 yard line. Second and 10, Green Bay at their 44. Carol Dale is wide to the right. Flipping but staying up. Over the middle, hitting Dollar with the ball to the Cleveland 38-yard line. Six foot five inch, 225 pound Boyd Dollar on the receiving end of a key pass from Bart Starr. Feekner and Benz making the tackle on the play for Cleveland. It's a first down for the Packers. At the Cleveland 38, they started on their own 20. with 18 first downs, eight rushing, nine passing, and one by a penalty. Jim Taylor gets the call. Number 82 for Cleveland is Jim Houston. Number 84 is Paul Wigan. Taking down the Packer fullback after a gain of three at the 35-yard line. Second down, seven. He has nine out of 18 in the throwing department and has had one interception. Taylor and Horning have been very busy on the ground. Second and seven at the 35. Once again, the call goes to Jim Taylor who bangs his way inside the 30-yard line. And Ross Feekner, number 20, is in there on the tackle and getting up with his uh, number just about obliterated was Dick Mojalewski. And Taylor was back for the towel. The ball is at the 28-yard line. Third down and a little bit less than one for the first down. up 82 yards according to our unofficial figures and Horning has 88. Taylor diving. Trying to make that first down. Feekner from his safety spot was up there on the play. It is a first down for the Packers. Marcello was in on that tackle too. Again, it's hard to stop that play. Real fine defensive effort on the part of the Browns, but Jimmy Taylor is running like a demon here today. For a man who was hurt earlier in the week, he is really something. He went up over the line to pick up that first down. 
Erich Barnes has come in at left cornerback for Cleveland now in place of Bernie Parrish. At the 27, it is first and 10. Number 50 is Costello, and number 71 is rookie Walter Johnson. In on the tackle, as Big Jim Taylor took it in to about the 23-yard line for a gain of four. Second down, six yards to go. The Packers lead 20 to 12, and they're using up time. Taylor getting a big hand as he goes to the sideline, and he is replaced by Tom Moore. Power running back from Vanderbilt. Paul Horning gets the call. Goes into the 21-yard line, and Paul Wigan, number 84, makes the tackle for the Browns. The gain is two. It'll be third down and four. The Packers lead by eight points. 20 to 12 in the fourth quarter. And we have about 10 and a half minutes left in the 33rd championship game. I think more important, Jim, they're using that clock. Their seconds are ticking off as they control this ball very strongly in the fourth period. Third down four. This is Horning. Taken down at about the line of scrimmage. Mo Jaleski out there for Cleveland again. And here comes Don Chandler. Mark Starr will be holding for Don Chandler. A man who has kicked some clutch field goals in his career and never a bigger one than last Sunday in the sudden death overtime against the gallant Baltimore Colts. At the 29-yard line, Starr will hold. It is good. The Packers lead 23-12. to We'll be back at the championship game with the Packers kickoff in just a moment. The Packers are leading 23 to 12, and Don Chandler has just tied a record in championship competition. This is Kelly with the ball to the 20, 30, Kelly to the 45, and still driving as he comes across midfield. Making the tackle was Don Chandler, the man who kicked off. A sensational return by Leroy Kelly of the Browns. And here it is again on the end zone isolated camera. Well, Leroy Kelly finds a big hole on the right side, breaks into the clear, he tries to make a cutback, but the slow footing kills it, and Cleveland Brown, trailing by 11 points, has moved across the 50 and into Packer territory. Paul Warfield out to the left as they go to the double wing formation, and Jim Brown is setting behind. Eight minutes, 57 seconds, Ryan slipping, and now running, and now throwing. And it is short at the 30-yard line, intended for Gary Collins. And as you can see, the fog is becoming more and more of a factor here in Green Bay. Don Chandler has kicked three field goals in this game to tie a record held by Jack Manders, Bob Snyder, George Pat Summerall, Paul Horning, Jerry Kramer, and the Browns' Luke Rosa for three field goals in a championship game. Leroy Kelly racing into the huddle for Cleveland. Again on that last play, I noticed that the Green Bay Packers went into complete double coverage on both deep receivers. So they are not going to give up anything long if they can help it. The Browns would have to get two touchdowns to do it. This is Jim Brown. On the screen, Brown coming over the left side. And number 60 is Leroy Caffey. Giant-sized right linebacker making the tackle. 
Eight minutes and 30 seconds and counting. So now the Browns with a third down situation. A touchdown and a field goal would not be enough. Ryan has completed eight in 17 tries. Third down and 10. And at the moment, the big job for Cleveland is to try to keep the football as the Packers are trying to get it back. A loss of six on the play, and it will be fourth down and 16 to go for Cleveland. As Gary Collins will be punting. Elijah Pitts and Willie Wood are back in the deep positions. 22 is Pitts and 24 is Wood. Marty Clark, who plays offensive right tackle ordinarily, is in there to snap the ball for Gary Collins. We'd like to remind you once again that the fog is not your set. It is uh, the real thing at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. We'd like to mention to you that there's a big one coming up on CBS next week. I know, Frank, I've seen the Dallas Cowboys a couple of times this year, and they're a very exciting football team. And uh, they'll be going against the Baltimore Colts in the playoff bowl. And that will be in Miami. In color next week at 1.30 Eastern Time. Sunday, January 9th. Collins with the kick. And Willie Wood wisely is going to let it roll as Johnny Brewer, number 83, covers it for Cleveland. And the Packers have the ball with seven minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. And the clock becomes more and more of a factor. Ken, as you and I both know, with the weapons this Cleveland Brown team has, fighting to defend their National Football League championship, they're going to give it an all-out try in these last few minutes. With the weapons they have, they can score from anywhere on the field. And they now have their Packers in a hole, and they will be going for that football. Erich Barnes continues at left corner, and Bernie Parrish is playing safety now for Cleveland. First and ten, Green Bay at the seventh. The Packers are leading 23 to 12. And the clock shows five minutes and 30 seconds as the Packers have to punt. are back deep. Kelly led the league in punt returns during the past season. Chandler gets it up. Hit by Bryant and the play. And the ball is bouncing at the 37-yard line, but there was contact down in the end zone. And the Packers will keep the ball. Don Chandler trying to get that punt off, standing right behind the goal post here on stop action. Gets the ball away, but is hit just as the ball leaves his foot. And it will bring the ball out for the Packers with a first down. E. Rich Barnes was the man who went into Don Chandler, and the Packers have it first down and 10 yards to go with 4.52 remaining. Packers with 20 first downs. And the ball now at the 22-yard line. Harold Dale again wide to the right. Paul Horning driving out to the 30. Number 71 is Johnson and number 49 Beach on the tackle for Cleveland. As Horning goes for eight. Second down and two. Right after the game is over, we'll be uh, reporting directly from the locker room downstairs. Ray Scott is on his way down now. Second down, two at the 30-yard line. Jim T. 
Taylor. He'll have the first down at the 35. Bill Glass, number 80, in on the tackle. But it's at the 35, first and 10. Three minutes and 54 seconds left to play, and the clock moving as you see it. And the Packer fans are sensing victory now. They lead 23 to 12. Ken, I was talking with Vince Lombardi yesterday, and he says one thing about Paul Horning. When the big game is there, Paul always comes up for it. So far, he's gained 97 yards today, turning in a fine performance along with the other setback, Jimmy Taylor. Now at the 35-yard line of the Packers, first and 10. No gain on the play. 71 Johnson pouring in there with Bill Glass to make the tackle on Paul Horning. Second down, 10. On behalf of Frank Gifford and Ray Scott, I'd certainly like to thank Bill Kelly, Bob Poole, Tom Sauerbrei, and John Wellman for helping us here in the booth today. Second down, 10 at the 35-yard line of the Packers. But the clock moves relentlessly on. <laughs> Bernie Parrish, number 30 in there, and Jim Taylor was the ball carrier. Trying to go straight ahead. Gillespie in on the tackle for Cleveland. It'll be third down and ten at the 35-yard line. With the score, the Green Bay Packers 23 and the Cleveland Browns 12. Let's pause for a moment. 23 to 12, Green Bay. With two minutes and 16 seconds left to play in the game. We have a correction on the roughing the kicker penalty. It was not Erich Barnes. It was Ralph Smith, number 41. The Packers at their 35. Third and 10. The draw play to Taylor. Down at about the 37-yard line. Vince Costello out there for Cleveland on the play. And Galen Fisk with him, as you can barely read the numbers anymore. The two-minute warning is coming up now with the score. The Packers 23 and the Browns 12. Let's pause for a moment. My buddy and I are out watching the pros. Hey, he's off. He's on his toes. Half's almost over. Can we tie the score? It's up. It's good. We let out a roar. Right about now, a smoke would go fine. He said, those taste too light. Try one of mine. He said, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. And we had a ball, and the taste of Viceroy topped it all. Now, if you smoke all seven leading filter brands, you'll find some too strong, some too light. But Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, smoke Viceroy for the taste that's right. Two minutes to play in the game. Fourth down and seven. Don Chandler back to kick. The Packers leading at 23 to 12. An air of excitement in Green Bay. Kelly and Roberts are back deep for the Browns. Long kick coming down. At the 17, it's Roberts. 25. And the flea, as they call him, is brought down at about the 27-yard line. And now it's a minute and 49 seconds. Dan Grimm made the tackle for Green Bay. 
I'd like to remind you once again that right after the game is over, Ray Scott and Frank Gifford will be down in the locker room area to talk with some of the stars of this game. The clock is moving, a minute and 40. Warfield is wide to the left. Collins again on the right. Ryan throwing the long one for Collins. And Willie Wood has picked it off. The Green Bay Packers, Willie Wood. Our head check in for Adderley, number 26, has come up with a big interception. And the Packers take off over the football, and it is now a case of running out the clock. The Packers have run 64 offensive plays to Cleveland's 34. The clock is moving. The fans are starting to gather around the sides of the field. The clock shows a minute and four seconds, and it is moving. The ball at the 26-yard line. Ball horning with it. Bangs out to about the 33. Again, Johnson is there on the tackle for Cleveland. There's the time. Possibly one more play. But the Browns, of course, may want to call a timeout here. 23 to 12. And time is called by Cleveland. The clock shows 27 seconds now. And Moore has come on for Paul Horning. So the Green Bay Packers, who have come back from the brink of defeat many times during this season, are on the verge of taking it all right now as you look at Vince Lombardi, their jubilant coach on the sideline. Incidentally, for... Clevelanders who would be planning to meet the Browns tonight. We are not certain, but the airport in Green Bay was closed earlier in the day, and we're not sure if it is open now. Twenty-seven seconds to play. Packers lead twenty-three to twelve. Tom Moore going straight ahead. 20 seconds and moving. And now Bart Starr coming to the sidelines to a tremendous ovation. And the clock is running out. Lombardi congratulating Starr as he comes to the sideline. The clock has stopped at 11 seconds. So they have taken out Horning. They have taken out Starr, and Bratkowski is now in at quarterback. Taylor is now out, and Pitts has replaced him. Down on the sideline, the photographers are snapping pictures of Vince Lombardi and his players. This undoubtedly will be it. Bratkowski gives it to Moore. In there for the short yardage, and it is all over at Green Bay. The Packers have defeated the Cleveland Browns for the championship of the league. And Vince Lombardi is being carried from the field. That's the end of the championship game. And the final score is Green Bay 23 and Cleveland 12. There you see the fans jubilant going after the goalposts as the Packers and the Browns are heading into the dressing rooms now. It's been a very exciting afternoon here in Green Bay and quite a battle between the Green Bay Packers and the Cleveland Browns as the goalposts 
at both ends of the field now are down. Both teams are wending their way into the dressing rooms, which are adjacent to each other. And on our post-team show, I know you'll be interested in hearing from some of the men that Ray Scott and Frank Gifford will be talking to. the dressing room of the National Football League champion Green Bay Packers. Just seconds ago, head coach Vince Lombardi gave the go-ahead and permitted press and radio and television to enter the Packer dressing room. We'll be there, of course, in just a moment. We're going to talk with Vince Lombardi. It'll be extremely difficult to pick out stars of this game, but we're going to make a brave attempt. For example, we plan to ask Bart Starr, who was a question mark starter because of injuries, of his feelings of this championship game won by the Packers. We're going to talk with Paul Horning and Jim Taylor, and of the defensive unit, Ray Nitschke and Willie Wood and Herb Adderley. So we'll be talking with Vince Lombardi, winning players of the Packers in that Packer dressing room on Pro Football Report. All right. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Gifford, and we've just seen the Green Bay Packers win the National Football League Championship, and a truly great performance it was. As Ray Scott said, it would be hard to pick out heroes on the Packers squad. They had many. Two, you must cite, Paul Horning and Jimmy Taylor. Jimmy Taylor, who earlier in the week was a question mark with a pull groin muscle, a re-pull groin muscle. He came on to lead this Packer attack along with Paul Horning. They combined together for almost 200 yards. And right now, Ray Scott is over in that Packers dressing room, and he will be talking to some of those stars. So let's go now to Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Frank Gibbard. Head coach Vince Lombardi is by my side. Just seconds ago, he asked that the two men representing the offensive and defensive units join him, and then we're going to ask some of the other individual players to come in. But, Coach, we've had two great captains, I might say, all year, Willie Davis and, and Skaronsky. Just wonderful. Coach, may I ask you just one uh, sort of general question? This is the third championship for the Packers since That's you have right. been the head coach. That's correct. Where would you fit this in in your feelings right now on the I following think I, I, I think I, I think I mentioned that during the week. I thought this team had more character than any football team I've coached. And I think that's a great compliment to them. May I ask you one technical question from a broadcaster's point of view? With the field conditions as everyone saw them, how close could you stick to your plan of the game? We, we stuck to the game plan. The field conditions do not bother us anymore. We, we're, uh, <laughs> we play the play. We play the game. Were you in any way amazed at the condition of the field in view of the horrible weather of I this morning? The condition, I thought the field was excellent on the, underneath the circumstances, really. Coach, I know that the reporters and the rest of the folks are waiting for you. We appreciate so much Thank you stopping you. by. me. I talk to your players now? Thank you. And, and all, anybody you want to. Okay, <laughs> fine. Now let's see. We have first Bob Skaronsky. Bob, uh, representing the offensive unit generally. Uh, one week ago at this time, we were chatting following the Colt victory. Did you think that the team would be ready mentally as they obviously were? Well, Ray, I think we have, this goes back farther than this week. It's been a long, hard year for the offense. Ray, we've had our troubles. We'd have our, our adversities. But this team, when it had to play, it played. And I, I felt last week and I felt all week that our team would be mentally ready to play a good football game. The Cleveland Browns are a wonderful team, Ray, but our guys want to win. It's been a long and a tough year. We've got a lot of criticism and we've got a lot of adversity, but we came back and we got it. This is a big thing. Bob, congratulations to you. Willie... Would you stand in here, please? Willie Davis, number 87. Willie, you played against your former teammates. What are your thoughts right now? Well, Ray, it was real sweet to win. Uh, we went into this ball game feeling we had a couple things to do defensively. We knew we had to stop Brown, who I think is the greatest back as far as a runner. We knew we had to stop Ryan Long passes. And the only thing I can say is we followed our defensive plans, and uh, we were able to keep things as we planned. All right. Congratulations to you, Willie. I would like to ask a threesome to move in right now, if they would, please. I'd like to ask Bart Starr, Paul Horning. Could one of you fellows get on my other side here, please? And Jimmy Taylor. Now, this is the old man, Ray. The old man, <laughs> yeah. Paul and Jimmy and Bart. Now, I'm not going to ask any one of you to be a spokesman for the three, but I would like to go around here. First, I want to ask you, Paul, was there any doubt in your mind that you would be ready physically today? There were all sorts of doubts expressed because of your injuries. Well, no, not actually. I felt pretty good, and uh, actually when it started snowing, I thought that it reduced uh, their speed down to our speed, so we were kind of happy to see it snow. Jimmy, uh, you, of course, were suffering with a pulled groin mu muscle. When did you really know you were going to be ready to play? Well, I felt real good. Uh, Saturday morning was the first time that I knew that I'd be in pretty good condition uh, for the game. And with the conditions, uh, I think it slowed it down and uh, got in our class. Bart, uh, I hate to make this sound like a hospital report of any sort, but uh, it's a fact that uh, these three, in addition to others, were injured one way or another prior to the game. Now, how about you, Bart? When did uh, Coach Lombardi and you jointly decide, or when was it decided, that you would start today? Well, I felt pretty good by Friday, Ray, but uh, he didn't decide until yesterday morning, Saturday morning's practice. Uh, he asked me how I felt afterwards, and I said I felt fine, and he said, okay, I'm going to start you. So I felt real good about that, of course. <laughs> Bart, from a quarterback's point of view, the coach has said you were able to stick to your pregame plan. Were there some little things that suddenly opened up you didn't expect or some things that were closed off that you uh, did not expect? Well, yes, those, those things always happen, and we call on a couple of plays that we had not anticipated running on a particular situation that developed and worked all right. But uh, overall, our, our game plan went pretty much as, as planned. And Ray, I'd like to say right here, I heard Skaronsky mention it earlier, that it's a real pleasure to play against a team like the Browns. They're the hardest hitting team to be as clean as I've ever played against in my life, and it's a real pleasure to play against them. All right, we have talked now with Bart and Paul and Jimmy. I'd like to uh, 
Jimmy, uh, first off, we w- we'll give you a chance to say one final thing before we want to call in a couple of members of the defensive unit here, Jimmy. Well, I think it was just a tremendous effort by the offensive line. I just want to give a lot of credit to them. They just stayed in there, and we, we drove them out in the middle and possessed the ball, a whole uh, game plan. Okay, well, now Herb Adderley, who came up with one interception, Willie Wood, who came up with another. Now, Willie's your interception led to a field, to a field goal, as I recall. I'm trying to remember now exactly. And Herb, your interception choked off what turned out to be probably the Browns' last chance to score. Now, uh, from the entire secondary's point of view, would you two jointly comment on the job, for example, done by Bobby Jeter today, who had to fill in, and he has played very little this year. Willie, how would you talk about that? I would say uh, Bob did an excellent job filling in uh, under the conditions in his championship game, and I imagine a lot of pressure was on him. I can only take my hat off to Bob, but I thought he did a terrific job. He covered Warfield several times there real nice, and uh, he played his defense excellent. He forced uh, on the running plays. I did, uh, uh, I just say he just did one bang of a job. As I turn to Herb Adderley, I'd like to note that in carrying, Paul Horning gained 104 yards today, and Jim Taylor picked up 100 yards running. Now, those figures, of course, are unofficial. And as you saw, it was on the field something less than 100%, but in great condition in view of the weather. Now, Herb Adderley, uh, may I ask you something not necessarily from a negative point of view, but uh, a, a little bit about the job in covering Gary Collins, particularly that touchdown pass that he caught from Frank Ryan. Uh, Ray, I knew that I had my work cut out for me, and uh, all week long, long I've been concentrating on taking what Collins does best, and that's that post pattern he runs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, I was looking for the post pattern, and Collins came down and gave me a real good move. And uh, I expected this out of him because he's one of the great receivers in the league, and I was dead. I couldn't do anything. The ball was laid up there perfectly, and uh, it was just seven points. Willie, uh, overall, did the Browns show you anything in, the, in their overall passing attack that you did not expect? Uh, were you all set, of course, for example, for their double wing, which they use so much today? Well, we knew uh, pretty much as to what the Browns were going to do. Uh, the point was stopping them because they, do, they can do everything well. Uh, they have great receivers, and, of course, the running uh, attack is just tremendous. I would say all in all, they have one of the well-balanced offenses in the league. Uh, our problem was uh, rushing the passer on that double wing because we knew that uh, what they tried to do to get us man-to-man uh, coverage and uh, one-on-one, that is, and uh, try to get somebody free. Um, I have to take my head off to uh, our, our, our defensive line because uh, they didn't give... Ryan, too much chance to step back there to throw the ball. And, uh, of course, one of the best defenses against the pass is the rush, and uh, I thought they did an excellent job on that. Willie, uh, Willie Wood, Herb Adderley, members of the Packer defensive secondary, our congratulations to you. Thank you, Ray. Herb. Thank, you for, thank you very much, Ray. Okay. Well, uh, we've been chatting here with some members of the Green Bay Packers, and in case you just happen to turn on your television set, the Packers have won the National Football League Championship with a 23-12 victory over the defending Cleveland Browns. Now, we'll be back in just a moment with more of the very happy post-championship activities right after this message. (laughs) To my left here is Don Chandler, who, uh, as reported by Ken Coleman during the game, along with others, uh, tied a championship game record of three field goals. And on my right here is Forrest Gregg. Don, I'm going to ask, how many championship games have you played in? This is the seventh one, Ray. And uh, I know the answer, but you got to say it. How have you made out up until now? Well, we won the first one, lost five straight, and then, of course, this one for the world championship. Don, how does this, in your thinking, fit in of the championship games you have played in, the teams you have played with? Well, this has got to be the greatest one of all, and it's certainly my greatest thrill. I'm going to turn to Forrest Gregg right now, who uh, started the season as an offensive guard, finished it as an offensive tackle, to use the word all pro in uh, conjunction with describing Forrest Gregg. is a little bit of an understatement, but uh, Coach Lombardi described Forrest before one game this season to us as being a real all pro, and in particular, Forrest, he pointed out what he felt was the sacrifice in you moving from one position to another. Uh, what are your thoughts right now as the Packers have won this championship? Well, uh... I felt like, you know, if I could help the team, I'd, I'd be happy to play guard. But uh, as it turned out, I wound up back out of tackle, and I was glad because I feel more at home there, and uh, that's more my position than in there at, at guard. Forrest, the backfield has pointed with great pride to the work of the offensive line today, the offensive backfield has. I wonder, would you comment as the offensive lineman on your thoughts on the running today by Horning and Taylor? Well, I'll tell you what, Ray. Uh, 
we were blocking them well. I'll, I'll say that. But uh, uh, Horn and Taylor were picking their holes real well today, and uh, they just kept driving and kept driving, and just they just wasn't going to give the ball up, and they wouldn't. They were going to get every inch they could. And I think it's a great credit to them that they gained as much yard as they did. Uh, I feel like it's one of our better days on the offensive line. But uh, you got to give them a lot of credit. They certainly did their job. Congratulations, Forrest. Thank you a lot. To you, Don Chandler, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Waiting here is a gentleman I've been trying to get to, but a lot of other people have been visiting with him, Hi, Ray, Ray Nitschke. Now, Ray, of course, number 66, was the middle linebacker, but he also calls the defensive signals for the Packers. Now, some of the other players that Ray have commented on uh, whether the Browns did anything that was not expected, and I wonder if you would comment as the man who had to call the defensive signal. Well, if anything they, they did that we didn't expect was that Jimmy Brown uh, catching the ball as much as he did. We didn't figure he'd be in the pass uh, receiving department too often, uh, but he, he was, and he caught a few passes that we, we didn't really expect out there, Ray. Uh, but he's a great football player, and he, he makes the big play for him. Ray, uh, our congratulations to you. I know that you expressed last week before the cold game, there was no doubt in your mind that you felt the Packers would win. Did you feel that way today? Yes, I did, Ray. Uh, very optimistic. It's a fine team, and we're the team of character, Ray. And it's proud to be a, a member of this team. Fine, Ray. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much, Ray. Middle linebacker Ray Nitschke will have a final word on the 1965 NFL championship game in just a moment. Unfortunately, one member of the coaching staff uh, is missing right now. We're having some trouble locating him. But uh, as every football fan knows, many times uh, assistant coaches work in, uh, to, a, to a certain extent somewhat anonymously. But right now, as the Packers are still talking and patting each other on the back in the uh, flush of this championship victory over the Cleveland Browns, I'd like for you to meet the members of head coach Vince Lombardi's coaching staff. Norb Hecker, Norb, and as I introduce each of you, uh, I'm just going to let you for a few seconds say what you have to say about this team and this championship victory. So, Norb Hecker. Thank you, Ray. Uh, it was a, uh, a frustrating season after a uh, uh, start that we had, and uh, we're just happy we won it, and uh, we got a great bunch of guys, great bunch of guys. Norb handles the defensive backfield. The man overall in charge of the Green Bay Packer defense, acknowledged as one of the finest in all of football, is Phil Bankston. Phil? Thank you for your kind words, uh, Ray. And uh, as Norb mentioned, we're terribly proud of the uh, all-out effort of our overall defensive unit. They, uh, they all played uh, inspired ball. They uh, went all out, and uh, we're certainly proud of them. Thank you, Phil. And now at my right shoulder here is Dave Hanner, former player, first year as a coach. Uh, what's the difference? A winning team as a player, a winning team as a coach, Dave? Well, Ray, you know it's always good to win regardless of where your player is a coach. But uh, the guys stayed in there real well and uh, real happy for him and for everyone's concern. We have just a few seconds left. Ray Witeka. Ray, your first year with the Packers and a championship. You can't beat that. No, it's great. Uh, the fellas uh, worked hard, and it was a long road, and they made it. They played a real fine game. And Red Cochran, who handles the offensive backfield. Red, your thoughts. Thank you very much, Ray. I think that uh, <laughs> our boys did a grand job today, Horning and Taylor, and Zeke Bradkowski did a good job getting us here, and we're all proud. And Tommy Fears, I'm glad we found you. Scotty, I'm glad to be here. It's a wonderful day. I, all I can say, our kids were superb right, uh, right there from the start when Carol Dale adjusted so well, got that pass in between the two and started us off on that touchdown uh, romp that we started there. Just a wonderful day, Scotty. Okay, Tom, congratulations to you. And Thank so you. to the Green Bay Packer organization from President Dominic Olenicek on through the ranks. Congratulations would be in order to the Green Bay Packers. And so this is Ray Scott with Frank Gifford and Ken Coleman saying goodbye from Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin.